Welcome to our time of worship together. Will you please join me in our opening responses? Creator God, source of life and love, we open our hearts, minds and lives to your presence. Jesus Christ, brother and saviour, God in flesh, we come as those who try to follow your path to the cross and beyond. Ever-present Spirit of God, we come to be filled with you, refreshed to live out your love each day. Today we begin our walk with Jesus at the very first station of the cross, Jesus in agony at the Garden of Gethsemane. First we hear a reading from the Gospel according to Mark. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. I wonder how those who were with Jesus that day might have felt. I liked him when he was strong turning over tables, casting out demons, catching the scribes in the snare of his rhetoric. He was strong even when he was kneeling down and washing feet. When he was strong, I was strong and it was a joy to follow him. Oh, don't get me wrong, following him wasn't easy. <sighs> I didn't understand him, but he made me feel good about myself and good about the world. He brought hope, a stability and a purpose that was lacking anywhere else. And I liked that the religious and the powerful felt the same way too, only what brought me joy was a terrible threat to them. But I believed in him. I believed that he could even overcome their power. So I followed, uh, only at a distance. I mean, I'm not Peter or John, nor even Mary. But I see something in him that I want so badly in me. I, I want my demons cast out. I want my feet washed. I want him to sweep away any junk and corruption in my life. And I want his stories to be true. Those wonderful stories of hope and forgiveness of a God who loves me. So it isn't easy seeing him weak. To see him scared. The others are asleep. But he is awake with a restless agitation. He sees what is coming. But he wishes it was different. I know this feeling too. Knowing where you must go. Yet longing for another way.
imagine that life was easy for Jesus, that so sure about who he was and who he was meant to be, that he faced death and suffering with calm and equanimity. It is certainly the case that at other points in the gospel, Jesus appears to face what lies ahead with profound composure, so much so that he even prophesies about his own death on numerous occasions. Any thoughts in this vein that we might have about Jesus' emotions about his death are put firmly in their place by Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane. The words used to describe how he feels here communicate an overwhelming sense of anguish, distress and grief. Indeed, against the backdrop of Jesus' composure elsewhere, his distress and agitation, which the passage implies were as much physical and verbal, must have been horrifying to behold. Even more than that, the passage makes clear that Jesus would do anything at this point to avoid what lies ahead. It is often said that bravery is not found in people who feel no fear, but in those who face their fears head on and do it anyway. Jesus here models for us the true, what true bravery looks like. He knows exactly how terrible the next few days will be for him and is profoundly distressed at the prospect. Nevertheless, he agrees to face them anyway. Brave is not usually, usually a characteristic associated with Jesus, but this passage makes it clear that brave is exactly what he was. Will you pray with me? Living Jesus, you entered the garden of fear and face the agony of your impending death. Be with those who share that agony and face death unwillingly this day. You shared our fear and knew the weakness of our humanity. Give strength and hope to the dispirited and despairing. To you, Jesus, who sweated blood, be honour and glory with the Father and the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As our time of worship together comes to an end, our walk with Jesus begins afresh. Will you join me in our closing responses? The God who has brought us to this place gives us strength to journey onward. The God who says, follow me to the cross and beyond, calls us to save a life, embrace death and find hope in the risen Christ. The God who lives with us in relationship is with us now and always shall be. We go then with the living God, creator, Christ and comforter. Amen.